It's a pleasure to have you join me on this virtual journey. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to our latest video where we'll be exploring Tom McClintock. Thomas Miller McClintock I.I., born July 10, 1956, is an American politician serving as the U.S. representative for since 2009 known as the 4th Congressional District until 2023. His district stretches from the Sacramento suburbs to the outer suburbs of Fresno. It includes Yosemite National Park. A member of the Republican Party, McClintock served as a California State Assemblyman from 1982 to 1992 and from 1996 to 2000, when he became a California State Senator, a position he held until 2008. He unsuccessfully ran for Governor of California in the 2003 recall election and for Lieutenant Governor of California in the 2006 election. In this section, we'll be shedding light on early life, education and early political career and its impact on our understanding of the subject. McClintock was born in White Plains, New York, and graduated in 1978 from the University of California, Los Angeles UCLA. At 23, he was elected chair of the Ventura County Republican Party, and served until 1981. He was Chief of Staff to State Senator Ed Davis from 1980 to 1982. From 1992 to 1994, he served as Director of the Center for the California Taxpayer. He was Director of the Claremont Institute's Golden State Center for Policy Studies from 1995 to 1996. In this chapter, we'll be shedding light on California Assembly and its role in shaping our understanding. California Assembly. In 1982, at age 26, McClintock ran for California's 36th State Assembly District, then based in Thousand Oaks, after redistricting. He defeated Democrat Harriet Cosmo Henson percent. He was re-elected in 1984, defeating Tom Jolica percent. In 1986, he was re-elected to a third term, defeating Frank Nekimkin percent. In 1988, he was re-elected to a fourth term, defeating George Webb II percent. In 1990, he was re-elected to a fifth term, defeating Jenny Connell percent. After running for Congress in 1992 and for Controller in 1994, McClintock ran for the Assembly again in 1996. He ran for California's 38th State Assembly District and defeated Democrat John Lauritsen percent to win his sixth Assembly term. In 1998, McClintock was re-elected to a seventh term unposed. McClintock offered California's lethal injection use for California's death penalty law. He also opposed tax increases and supported spending cuts. He was a strong proponent of abolishing the car tax. Brace yourselves for the next chapter, where we'll be dissecting California Senate. California Senate. In 2000, McClintock retired from the California Assembly to run for California's 19th State Senate District. He ranked first in the May 7 open primary with 52% of the vote. In November, he defeated Democrat Daniel Gonzalez, percent. He was re-elected in 2004, defeating Paul Joseph Graber, percent. In 2008, McClintock voted against Proposition 2, which prohibits confining calves, pigs and hens in small cages in which they cannot extend their limbs. Farm animals are food, not friends, he said in response to backlash to his vote. He also cited concern about increased grocery bills. In 2000, he was instrumental in proposing a two-thirds reduction in the vehicle license fee or car tax. In 2003, he opposed then-Governor Gray Davis's attempt to rescind a rollback of a vehicle license fee. McClintock has also opposed deficit reduction efforts that would have increased taxes. He supported the Bureaucracy Reduction and Closure Commission and performance-based budgeting. In this section, we'll be peeling back the layers of 1994 controller election to reveal its true essence. McClintock ran for California State Controller after incumbent Gray Davis retired. He won the Republican primary, defeating John Morris, percent. In the general election, 
he lost to Kathleen Connell, former special assistant to Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley and director of the LA Housing Authority, percent, with three other candidates receiving the other 6% of the vote. Let's now shift gears and explore 2002 controller election through a critical lens, uncovering its strengths and weaknesses. McClintock ran for controller again in 2002, facing Democratic nominee Steve Wesley, an eBay executive. Wesley outspent him 5 to 1. McClintock's campaigns focused on increasing accountability for the state budget. The ads featured the character Angus McClintock, a fictional cousin and fellow Scottish American extolling McClintock's thriftiness and accountability in low budget 15 second ads. He lost by a margin of just 0.2%, or 16,811 votes, to Wesley, who won with 45.3% of the vote. Three other candidates received 9.5% of the vote. Let's now zoom in on 2003 gubernatorial recall election and uncover the hidden gems that lie within. In 2003, McClintock ran in the recall election against Davis. Republican and film actor Arnold Schwarzenegger won the election with 49% of the vote. Democratic Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante finished second with 31%. McClintock finished third with 14%. Together, Republicans Schwarzenegger and McClintock were supported by 5,363,778 Californians, or 62.1% of the vote. 132 other candidates received the remaining 6.4%. McClintock performed the best in Stanislaus County, where he received 24% of the vote. He also cracked 20% or higher in several other counties, Mariposa 23%, Tuolum 22%, Tema 21%, Alaveras 20%, Madara 20%, Modoc 20%, Shasta 20%, San Joaquin 20%, and Ventura 20%. With our curiosity peaked, let's embark on a dedicated exploration of 2006 Lieutenant Gubernatorial Election and its fascinating intricacies. McClintock ran for Lieutenant Governor in 2006. He defeated Tony Farmer in the Republican primary percent. In the general election, he lost to Democratic State Insurance Commissioner John Garamendi, percent. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the fascinating world of 1992. After redistricting, McClintock retired from the Assembly to challenge Democratic U.S. Representative Anthony Celsius. Islandson in California's 24th Congressional District. He won the nine-candidate Republican primary with a plurality of 34% of the vote, beating second-place finisher San Corman by 11 points. Violence and defeated McClintock, percent. In this chapter, we'll be unraveling the enigma of 2008 and discovering its transformative power. On March 4, 2008, McClintock announced his candidacy for the U.S. House of Representatives in California's 4th Congressional District, about 300 miles north of the district McClintock represented in the state Senate. The district's nine-term incumbent, John Doolittle, was retiring. McClintock was unable to vote for himself in either the primary or the general election. Although for most of the year he lived in Elk Grove, a suburb of Sacramento within the 3rd District at the time, his legal residence was in Thousand Oaks, within the borders of his state Senate district. The California Constitution requires state senators to maintain their legal residence in the district they represent. Upon McClintock's entry into the race, fellow Republicans Rico Oller and Eric Egland withdrew from the primary and endorsed him. He was also endorsed by the Republican Liberty Caucus, the Club for Growth, and U.S. Representative Ron Paul. McClintock faced former U.S. Representative Doug Ose, a moderate who represented the neighboring 3rd District from 1999 to 2005. Like McClintock, Ose lived outside the district and was painted as a carpetbagger and a liberal who had voted to raise taxes and who voted for earmarks. McClintock defeated O's percent. 
the Democratic nominee was retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Charles D. Charlie Brown, who ran an unexpectedly strong race against Doolittle in 2006. In March 2008, O's campaign commercials criticized McClintock for receiving over $300,000 in per diem living expenses during his time in the state senate even though he lived in Elk Grove for most of the year. McClintock maintained that the payments were justified because his legal residence was in Thousand Oaks, in his district. He said, every legislator's residence is close to the capital. My residential costs up here are much greater than the average legislator because my family is here. O's campaign commercials argued McClintock did not own or rent a home in the 19th district, but claimed his mother's home in Thousand Oaks as his state senate district residence. These attacks prompted a response from McClintock's wife, Lori, who said McClintock stayed with his mother in order to care for her after she fell ill and after the death of her husband. McClintock ran ads attacking Brown's participation at a 2005 protest by Code Pink, a prominent anti-war group, and argued Brown supported gay marriage but not the troops in Iraq. He also portrayed Brown as a clone of Speaker Nancy Pelosi. By November 23, McClintock led Brown by 1,566 votes 0.4% of the vote, 184,190 to 182,624. Subsequent returns expanded the margin slightly with the last returns coming in from El Dorado County shortly after Thanksgiving. On December 1, McClintock declared victory and Brown conceded on December 3. McClintock defeated Brown by a margin of 0.5% or 1,800 votes. He prevailed by a 3,500 vote margin in Placer County, the district's largest county. Brown won three of the district's nine counties, Sierra 49.8%, Plumas 47.9%, and Nevada 42.3%. McClintock won mainly on the coattails from John McCain, who carried the fourth with 54% of the vote, his fifth best total in the state. Get ready for a captivating exploration as we unravel the layers of 2010 and their profound significance. McClintock defeated Michael Babich in the Republican primary, Babich percent. On November 2, he was re-elected, defeating businessman Clint Curtis percent and winning every county in the district. In this section, we'll be exploring 2012. For his first two terms, McClintock represented a district covering the northeast corner of California, from the eastern suburbs of Sacramento to the Oregon border. Redistricting after the 2010 census pushed the fourth well to the south. Only three counties remained from the Old Fourth, Nevada, Placer, and El Dorado. The redrawn district cut out the fourth share of Sacramento County, including the part of Elk Grove that includes McClintock's home. Elk Grove is now entirely within the borders of the neighboring 7th district, represented by Democrat Omi Berra, making McClintock one of only a few members of Congress who live outside the district they represent. House members are constitutionally required only to live in the state they represent, but long-standing convention holds that they live in or reasonably close to their districts. McClintock said in 2016 that he intended to move his residence inside the redrawn fourth as soon as home prices rebounded enough for him to sell his Elk Grove home. In 2012, California instituted its top two primary in which candidates of all parties run against one another and the top two finishers, regardless of party, advance to the general election. By Clintock and Democrat Jacopel were the only candidates in the top two primary, so the general election was a rematch. The reconfigured fourth was as strongly Republican as its predecessor, and McClintock was re-elected to a third term, defeating a pull percent in the general election. McClintock won all but two of the district's 10 counties, Alpine 41% and Nevada 37%. As we venture forward, let's take a closer look at 2014 and its impact on our understanding. 
where Clintock was re-elected, finishing first in California's top two primary and defeating moderate Republican challenger National Guard Major Art Moore in the general election. Percent. Now, let's redirect our focus towards 2016 and discover its significance in our narrative. But Clintock again finished first in the primary and defeated Democrat Robert W. Derlitt, a physician, environmentalist and retired UC Davis professor, in the general election. Percent. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of 2018 where Clintock defeated Democratic challenger Jessica Morse in the general election, receiving 184,401 votes to her 156,253 54.1% to 45.9%. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at tenure. During the 112th Congress, McClintock was one of 40 members of the Republican Study Committee who frequently voted against Republican Party leadership and vocally expressed displeasure with House bills. In 2011, he voted against the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012 due to a provision that would allow the government and the military to indefinitely detain American citizens and others without trial. Where Clintock's chief of staff, Igor Berman, was a candidate for Congress in California's 7th Congressional District in 2014. In 2009, McClintock signed a pledge sponsored by Americans for Prosperity promising to vote against any global warming legislation that would raise taxes. McClintock voted in favor of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. He voted against the first version of the bill, displeased with the removal of deductions related to medical expenses, student loan interest, and casualty loss. Those three items were addressed in the final version of the bill, where Clintock said the bill would restore American workers to an internationally competitive position. He expressed concern about the bill's impact on the budget deficit and anticipated that it would be addressed by spending reforms this coming year. In 2017, McClintock called for Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller to investigate President Donald Trump. McClintock felt that Trump's firing of James Comey justified a special prosecutor. After Trump pulled 1,000 U.S. troops from Kurdish-held territory on the Syrian border south of Turkey in 2019, a bipartisan resolution passed the House that condemned him for abandoning those U.S. allies that would allow the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL to re-establish and regroup its forces, and allow the Turks to attack the Kurds. McClintock was one of the two members of California's congressional delegation to vote against it. In 2020, McClintock was the sole House Republican to co-sponsor the Ending Qualified Immunity Act, which was proposed in response to the murder of George Floyd and resultant widespread protests. The act was introduced by Justin Amash and Ayanna Presley and co-sponsored by 62 House Democrats in addition to McClintock. Because Amash was a registered libertarian as of the act's introduction in June 2020, McClintock's support technically made the act the first tripartisan piece of federal legislation in modern U.S. history. In the 118th Congress, McClintock voted against multiple motions to discipline certain Democrats in office, such as the first censure of Adam Schiff, the censure of Rashid Tlaib, and the impeachment proceedings of Alejandro Mayorkas. In each, he lambasted their actions but believed the motions were an erosion of the standards to which such motions should be held. As of October 2021, McClintock had voted in line with Joe Biden's stated position 5% of the time. As we venture forward, let's examine legislation in detail and gain a deeper appreciation for its significance. McClintock supported the Water Rights Protection Act, a bill that would prevent federal agencies from requiring certain entities to relinquish their water rights to the United States in order to use public lands. The bill was a reaction to the United States Forest Service's decision to pursue a new regulation to demand that water rights be transferred to the federal government as a condition for obtaining permits needed to operate 121 ski resorts that cross over federal lands. 
McClintock supported the bill, saying that the Forest Service's regulation illustrates an increasingly hostile attitude by this agency toward those who make productive use of our vast national forests, in this case by enhancing and attracting the tourism upon which our mountain communities depend. In this chapter, we'll be shedding light on committee assignments and its role in shaping our understanding. For the 118th Congress a Committee on Natural Resources, Subcommittee on Federal Lands, Subcommittee on Water, Wildlife and Fisheries Committee on the Budget Committee on the Judiciary, Subcommittee on Immigration Integrity, Security, and Enforcement Chair, Subcommittee on the Constitution and Limited Government. As we move forward, let's uncover the untold stories and fascinating intricacies of caucus memberships. Congressional Arts Caucus Republican Study Committee Tea Party Caucus American Sikh Congressional Caucus Congressional Constitution Caucus Congressional Western Caucus United States Congressional International Conservation Caucus House Freedom Caucus Formally. As we progress, let's shine a spotlight on 2020 presidential election and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. In December 2020, McClintock joined 125 other Republican members of Congress in signing an amicus brief in support of a lawsuit by the Attorney General of the State of Texas that sought to overturn the certified results of the 2020 presidential election in four other U.S. states. The lawsuit was called a seditious abuse of the judicial process by the Attorney General of Pennsylvania and simply madness by 2012 Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi issued a statement that called signing the amicus brief an act of election subversion. McClintock later became one of seven Republicans who did not support their colleagues' efforts to challenge the results of the election on January 6, 2021. These seven signed a letter that, while giving credence to election fraud allegations Trump made, said Congress did not have the authority to influence the election's outcome. McClintock voted against impeaching Trump over his role in inciting the 2021 storming of the US Capitol. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of animal rights as we examine its impact and relevance. McClintock has said that farm animals are food, not friends. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting cannabis and exploring its implications in greater detail. In 2015, McClintock introduced an amendment to limit the enforcement of federal law in states that have legalized cannabis. Known as the McClintock Apolis Amendment, it failed by a vote. It was reintroduced in 2019 as the Blumenauer McClintock and Norton Amendment and passed. In 2016, McClintock endorsed California's Proposition 64, the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. He stated, Our current laws have failed us, and have created a violent and criminal black market that actively and aggressively markets to young people. Legalization takes the criminal profit out of the equation, and allows us to regulate marijuana the same way we currently regulate alcohol. In 2020, McClintock was one of five House Republicans to vote for the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement MORE Act to legalize cannabis at the federal level. In 2021, he was one of four original co-sponsors of a Republican-led legalization bill named the State Reform Act. Let's zoom in on COVID-19 and understand its implications. During the COVID-19 pandemic, McClintock expressed the view that wearing face masks should not be mandatory, and while wearing a mask during congressional sessions, said, this mask is useless. During the second impeachment of Donald Trump, McClintock wore a mask that read this mask is as useless as our governor, referring to Governor Gavin Newsom. Get ready to uncover the mysteries surrounding defense as we navigate its intriguing terrain. In September 2021, McClintock was among 75 House Republicans to vote against the National Defense Authorization Act of 2022, which contains a provision that would require women to be drafted. In this section, we'll be shedding light on environment and its impact on our understanding of the subject. 
where Clintock questions the role that human activity plays in climate change, arguing that the climate has been changing for four and a half billion years. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of foreign policy on our broader topic. In 2019, McClintock was one of 60 representatives to vote against condemning Trump's withdrawal from Syria. In 2020, McClintock voted against the National Defense Authorization Act of 2021, which would prevent the president from withdrawing soldiers from Afghanistan without congressional approval. In June 2021, McClintock was one of 49 House Republicans to vote to repeal the AUMF against Iraq. In July 2021, McClintock was one of five House Republicans to vote against a bill that allocates $2.10 billion for UFM visas and Capitol Hill security. In 2023, McClintock was among 47 Republicans to vote in favor of Conrad's 21 which directed President Joe Biden to remove U.S. troops from Syria within 180 days. Get ready for a thought-provoking discussion as we delve into human and civil rights and its impact on our understanding. McClintock opposes same-sex marriage. In 2008, he said, calling a homosexual partnership a marriage doesn't make it one. In June 2021, McClintock was one of 14 House Republicans to vote against legislation to establish June 19, or June 10, as a federal holiday. With that being said, let's now move on to immigration. McClintock voted against the Fairness for High-Skilled Immigrants Act of 2019 which would amend the Immigration and Nationality Act to eliminate the per-country numerical limitation for employment-based immigrants, to increase the per-country numerical limitation for family-sponsored immigrants, and for other purposes. McClintock voted against the Further Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2020 which authorizes DHS to nearly double the available h -up visas for the remainder of FY 2020. McClintock voted against Consolidated Appropriations Act HR 1158 which effectively prohibits ICE from cooperating with health and human services to detain or remove illegal alien sponsors of unaccompanied alien children was. Prepare yourself for an eye-opening discussion on voting rights in the upcoming portion of this video. McClintock opposes mail-in voting, saying in 2020 that it was a corrupted process that allows ballots to be sent to voters who have died or moved away. As we progress through this video, let's now turn our gaze towards personal life. McClintock lives in the Sacramento area and Thousand Oaks. He was married to Laurie McClintock until her death in December 2021 from dehydration due to gastroenteritis caused, according to a coroner's report, by adverse effects of white mulberry leaf ingestion. McClintock is a Baptist. Our focus now turns to electoral history, an important aspect of our discussion. California State Assembly District 36 Republican Primary Election, 1990 Party Republican Republican Total Votes Voter Turnout California's 26th Congressional Republican Primary Election, 1992 Party Republican 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 Total Votes Voter Turnout California State Controller Republican Primary Election, 1994 Party Republican Republican Total Votes Voter Turnout California State Assembly District 38 Republican Primary Election, 1996 Party Republican 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 Total Votes Voter Turnout California State Senate District 19 Primary Election 2000 Party Republican Democratic Republican Total Votes Voter Turnout California State Controller Republican Primary Election 2002 Party Republican 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 Total Votes Voter Turnout For a complete list of all candidates who participated in the 2003 recall election, see 2003 California Gubernatorial Recall Election California State Lieutenant Gubernatorial Republican Primary Election, 2006 Party Republican Republican Total Votes Voter Turnout. California's 4th Congressional District Republican Primary Election, 2008 Party Republican 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 Total Votes Voter Turnout. 
California's 4th Congressional District Republican Primary Election, 2010 Party Republican Republican Total Votes Voter Turnout. California's 4th Congressional District Primary Election, 2014 Party Republican Republican Independent Total Votes Voter Turnout. California's 4th Congressional District Election, 2014 Party Republican Republican Total Votes Voter Turnout. California's 4th Congressional District Primary Election, 2016 Party Republican Democratic Democratic. California's 4th Congressional District Election, 2016 Party Republican Democratic Total Votes. California's 4th Congressional District Election, 2018 Party Republican Democratic Total Votes. California's 4th Congressional District Election, 2020 Party Republican Democratic Total Votes. Remember to follow me on social media for behind-the-scenes content and updates.